hello so we are back with a curve design project one in this series we are going to calculate fuselage design now during the course of fuselage design our main aim will be to determine the dimensions of the fuselage and the aerodynamic drag that is resulted by the selected fuselage design. An introduction. So, following the main wing, the very next logical step in the conceptual design involves the fuselage design. The fuselage has a number of functions that vary depending on the type and mission of aircraft. Thus, it includes accommodating the crew, passengers, baggage or other payloads as well as possibly housing the internal engine. Other considerations for fuselage design includes possible fuel storage, the structure for wing attachments and the retractable landing gears. Depending on Mach number regime, the optimum shape of the fuselage or more specifically the length to diameter ratio may be determined on the basis of minimizing the aerodynamic drag. Uh, if we consider subsonic aircrafts, the ratio is historically far from the optimum and it can be more easily determined using functions. But with respect to subsonic supersonic aircrafts, the penalty for deviating from the optimum leaves very little room for comparisons. So passenger compartment data, as you can see from the table, using the range from literature survey, the conceptual passenger compartment data has been uh, estimated. So the passenger compartment was designed to comfortably seat for 12 to 15 passengers. So the diameter of the fuselage was based on having two seats that are separated by a central center aisle. Based on the guidelines for passenger comfort requirements as in the table, the proposed seating arrangement for conceptual data is for a normal uh, subsonic uh, business jet aircraft. Now this arrangement is equivalent to first class seating on a commercial passenger aircraft. The diameter of the fuselage is based on the sum of seat and aisle width plus a 4 inch fuselage wall thickness so which is common for any type of aircraft so this gives us a fuselage diameter of 9 feet and the subsequent data can be compared and been observed from the table now it is very important to determine the fuselage fineness ratio so in a major majority of subsonic aircraft, a fineness ratio of 0.3 is not practical and is never used. In most cases, the payload requirements are a more important design driven. And smaller fineness ratios like 0 0.08 to 0 0.125 are used. If we convert it, into L by D ratio that comes into 8 to 12.5 are used. Now this is illustrated in the data and uh, which gives us the finest ratio for subsonic passenger transport aircrafts. So for our aircraft we consider the length of the fuselage was stipulated by having an optimum fineness ratio of L by T is equals to 12. Therefore, based on our studies, 
we have d equals to 9 and gives us a length of a fuselage as 108 feet. An important fact if we consider supersonic aircraft that for supersonic aircraft the overall drag coefficient is made up of contributions from viscous drag which is often represented as CF and the supersonic wave drag with coefficient CDW. The percentage at that each contributes to the total drag are a function of finest ratio. Now again an optimum finest ratio exists. In this case in it occurs at d by l equals to 0 0.07 or l by d is approximately equals to 14. If you if you compare we can see that the l by d for subsonic is around 12 whereas l by d for supersonic is 14. So in contrast to subsonic aircraft minimizing the aerodynamic drag is the design driven for long range supersonic aircraft and their fuselage design use the optimum finest ratio. Input data for calculations now. In this spreadsheet that we are going to present, there are two areas where the input parameter are placed. This corresponds to flight regime data and dimension data. The flight regime would correspond to that phase of the flight plan that is the most important design driven. Generally, these calculations are intended to determine the drag on the fuselage, which when combined with the other components is used to size the engine. Often, this is done for cruise conditions. Now in this spreadsheet, the input parameters are cruise Mach number and cruise altitude, which we have done in our previous calculation. Now relations that are identical to those used in the previous spreadsheets are used here to determine the velocity, density and dynamic pressure at the cruise altitude. Now in addition, the kinematic viscosity nu is determined. Here a constant average viscosity with altitude that is mu is assumed whereby nu is equals to mu by rho density. Actually mu is a weak function of altitude. However, this is primarily due to changes in altitude during the flight phases. So another important section we have our viscous drag calculation the formulas that are needed to be used. So the drag calculation consider viscous drag. So as we are considering a subsonic aircraft we will be having a viscous drag basically a dominant force of drag. Now the procedure for the viscous drag is to divide up the fuselage length into 10 equal elements. That is represented in the first column. You have L, X by L in 10 percentage increments. So the equivalent locations along the fuselage are given in the second column. That is just a multiple of the length and reduction in 10 percentage of it. So as mentioned in the equation, the viscous drag corresponds to the product of dynamic pressure, surface width area and local friction coefficient. Also the product of the form drag F and the interface factor Q is then multiplied by the viscous drag to satisfy the equation as mentioned. So the formula for F that is form factor is given and we opt Assume the Q equals to 1. 
Now the diameter at x by l station can be either input by hand hand calculating like determining the reduction in diameter from start to end and it needs to be made sure that you have a maximum diameter at the center of the fusage. So the primary local per perimeter is based on the dimension and shape at each x by l location. So in this study, the cross section is considered as a circular. So the product of the local perimeter and segment length gives the surface area. Also, the friction coefficient is inversely proportional to Reynolds number. So the equation to estimate the friction coefficient depends on if the flow is laminar or turbulent. In most of the cases, you'll find that the Reynolds number is higher and usually the flow is turbulent. So if the Reynolds number is less than 1000, the flow is presumed to be laminar and the CF coefficient of friction is represented as mentioned above. Otherwise, the flow will be presumed to be turbulent. So the, as mentioned, the turbulent formula for coefficient of friction will be used. The drag corresponding to each segment is calculated based on the local surface area and friction coefficient. These are then summed up to obtain the total viscous drag. So here in the table, we show the viscous drag calculation. As you can see, x by L, the first column, where we are having a 10% increase. And in second column, the L, see you can see the last, last digit of 108, that is the length of the fuselage. And from start to end, the complete fuselage has been divided into 10 parts. Uh, then we have um, x minus l by 4. We have the value of x. We know, know l is equals to 108. And we can see the value to be repeating at one stage. So the leftover data is not required. Next, we have d diameter in feet. Again, the diameter is considered to be maximum at the center and a desired percentage has been distributed throughout the section. Next is perimeter. The perimeter is nothing but pi into d, which, which, which will give you the diameter. Then we have a surface weighted area. Now the surface weighted area can be determined by your x2 minus x1. So 10.8 minus 0 into the perimeter, 10.68. Then we have Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number formula is defined as u naught x by mu. We know the value of u naught, the velocity can be obtained. We have the value of x and we can take mu kinematic viscosity from our previous consideration. Also, we have the formula for coefficient of friction and we can very well see the values are above 1000. So we will use the values for turbulent flow and we'll obtain our coefficient of friction. Finally, we'll get the drag. So the drag formula consists of Q, that is dynamic pressure, into uh, coefficient of friction into F into Q and also the surface weighted area. After all, we sum all the forces and we obtain our drag, total drag as 8.95 into 8.95.78 LBF. This has been a useful session.
please make sure that you use the calculations for particular type of aircraft both subsonic and supersonic aircrafts have two different formulas and uh, different ratios to obtain the diameter and length of the fuselage also make sure you consider the turbulent or laminar flow and use the desired formula to obtain your drag if sub subsonic then only viscous drag if supersonic a wave drag also needs to be considered and needs to be determined to find the total drag due to the fuselage structure hope this session was useful in the further lectures we'll find the desired properties of other required parameters thank you and have a good day